A few weeks ago, from in the book of Acts, we met Tabitha, a disciple, the only woman in the Bible called a disciple, and a woman known for her good works, who inspired her community. And today, we continue in Acts, and we meet another female leader in the early church, uh, Lydia. And so clearly, we can see from the earliest days of the church, both men and women have been involved in meaningful ways. So today we'll see what we can learn about discipleship from Lydia. This is from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 to 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in the city for some days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. So we aren't told very much about Lydia, Uh, But we do get the sense from this text that she is an an independent and resourceful businesswoman. She is a merchant of purple cloth, which was an expensive commodity worn only by the wealthiest and most elite. Uh, Purple dye was made from little crushed snail shells, which were, it took a whole lot of them to make enough dye for a garment. So it was a very precious item. From her invitation to Paul, we can assume that Lydia is the head of her household and owns her own home, so she's not dependent on a husband for her status. Lydia is a Greek name, which means that she was probably a Gentile who worships the God of Israel. So she chooses to practice Judaism even though she was not born a Jew. So this makes me believe that Lydia must be a woman who thinks deeply about what she believes, she follows her conscience, and acts on her conviction. She is also curious and open to learning something new. Acts tells us that God opened her heart, and she listened eagerly to what Paul had to say. Lydia is open to receiving God's word. Her heart is hospitable to the gospel, which leads her then to be hospitable to Paul and his companions as well. Following God and practicing hospitality are deeply related. Doing one allows us to do the other better. Lydia is open to receiving these missionaries who show up in Philippi, even though they are strangers. If she hadn't approached them with a hospitable heart, if she had regarded them with suspicion because they were not from around there, then she wouldn't have been transformed by hearing their message about Jesus. Lydia's openness to these visitors allows her to grow in her understanding of God. And because she longs to know and to follow God, because she shows up for prayer that day with a heart ready to receive God's word, 
she is moved to invite the missionaries into her home. And so her faithfulness creates an opportunity to extend hospitality in a meaningful way that changes her future, making her home one of the very first Christian churches. Now, the spiritual practice of hospitality goes beyond just offering shelter. Restaurants and hotels are considered the hospitality industry um, and offer an important and meaningful service, but the spiritual discipline of hospitality is not a transaction. It requires something much more personal than providing a meal or a bed, even a bed or a meal in your own home. True hospitality is about more than sharing what you have. It involves sharing who you are. It means letting down your defenses and inviting other people into your life in ways that just might change you. When you practice hospitality, you are moved to treat a stranger as family, to redefine them as us. To really be a good host to someone, you have to give them your presence, the gift of being in relationship in a way that is vulnerable because there's no longer walls between you or a safe distance. Hospitality involves both giving and receiving. It's a mutual relationship between host and guest because both have to trust the other, trust their well-being to this other person. Hospitality is a spiritual practice because it's how Jesus lived in relationship with us. Jesus became one of us and put his life in our hands. When Jesus became flesh, the dividing line between divine and human fell away so that we could become one with God and God could be one with us. Practicing this kind of radical hospitality is how the early Christian church grew, by declaring that God's love was intended for all people, Gentile and Jew, across nationality and language, across gender and class. The early Christians treated people as if they were all part of the same family of God. They ate together, they cared for each other in their times of need, they invited each other into their homes. Methodist Bishop Mortimer Arias, who was a professor of evangelism, said that the first century Christian church drew so many converts in large part because of their reputation for extraordinary hospitality. One Roman emperor, he says, even ordered the governors in his provinces to practice hospitality like that of the Christians so that the Roman Empire would stay civilized and continue to grow. In the book, Out of Africa, the author tells a story about a time she missed an opportunity for this kind of hospitality. She was living in Nairobi, Kenya, and one day a boy came and knocked on her door and asked for a job. This boy, Kitao, was a good worker. And after three months of her coming to depend on him and what he was doing in her house, He came and asked if she would write him a letter of recommendation so he could go and work in another city for a Muslim man. And she was really disappointed to lose this faithful helper, and so she kept trying to convince him to stay and offered him a raise, but his mind was made up. He told her that he had come to live with her because he was planning to become either a Christian or a Muslim, and he wanted to see firsthand how a Christian lived, to observe their habits and how they treated people. And now he planned to go and do the same with a Muslim before he chose which religion he would adopt. This young boy knew that our faith and our practice of hospitality are deeply connected. To him, the sincerity of his boss's hospitality demonstrates the quality of her faith. Lydia suggests that the sincerity of her faith should be the test by which Paul decides whether or not to accept her hospitality. 
After she's baptized, Lydia says to Paul, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, then come and stay in my home. Perhaps both tests are just as effective at revealing what is truly in a person's heart. Lydia's spontaneous hospitality is her way of telling Paul that receiving the good news of Jesus has changed her. It's changed how she relates to other people. Now, we don't know what kind of hostess Lydia was before this day. Maybe she threw big and expensive parties for all her wealthy customers who bought her cloth. Maybe she gave poor gave food to the poor, sharing out of her abundance. Or maybe she was very private and preferred not to invite attention as a female homeowner. But whatever she did before, her words now show that her invitation to Paul is rooted in her discipleship. If you have judged me to be faithful, come and stay in my house. She is not just offering him shelter, a place for weary missionaries to spend the night, She's saying that now, these Christian missionaries and she and her household are one family of faith. That they are no longer strangers. That their differences in economics and gender and nationality matter less than their shared desire to follow Jesus. Our openness to God's good news takes away the barriers that we put up between ourselves and others so that we can more fully become the one body of Christ, united with those around us. Our faithfulness helps us to grow in hospitality. Our hospitality helps us to grow in faithfulness and connects us in new and powerful ways with the rest of the body. Imagine what could happen if we lived out Jesus' model of radical hospitality every day, Inviting people who are different from us into our lives. Being fully present and open to what they might have to teach us. Listening for a fresh word from God, from those we meet. How might our own faith be enriched? Too often, I think, we approach those who are different from us with our minds already made up about who they are, looking for ways to reinforce our suspicions and our fears and stereotypes. We retreat into our own circles of like-minded people, and so God begins to look and think more and more like us. Thomas Merton said, God speaks to us in three places. In scripture, in our deepest selves, and in the voice of a stranger. Imagine what could happen if we showed up every week to worship with an open heart, ready to be moved to action by God's word, ready to let God's love flow through us and increase our love for our neighbor by breaking down the divisions between us. Too often, I think many of us are guilty of coming to worship or turning to prayer with our minds already made up about what God has to say to us looking for ways to reinforce what we already believe. We approach worship like it's something separate from our everyday lives, a time set apart to connect with God, and then afterwards we expect to go back to the rest of our lives and our relationships like nothing has changed. So today, may God open our hearts like God opened Lydia's so that we can become hospitable places for God's love to take root. So that our faith, our church, our community, our whole lives can grow into powerful witnesses of God's extraordinary hospitality offered to all. If you would like to grow in faith and service as a part of this church, then we'd be happy to talk to you about becoming a member of St. Paul's anytime, or if you are ready to join today, you're invited to come forward as we stand and sing together hymn number 545, He Leadeth Me. <laughs>